what do you know? Somebody was keeping track. Mm, this is Wretched Radio. Jimmy, you did your math. I had a list of eight things that aren't things. Eight current issues that are causing us to not genuinely, thoroughly, deeply love one another in Christian unity that are issues that are blocking us from that or diminishing that. I had seven, or I, I had eight, but you only counted seven. seven. You, you only decided to share seven. Seven of them. You are correct, sir. Before I get to my last one, did I? do you think that I missed anything? I had COVID, masks, vaccines, uh, abolitionists versus incrementalists, election results, voter integrity, systematic racism. That's that's what I came up. Any other big ones that I missed? Uh, yeah, I would say personally, from from my standpoint, education tends to divide. Oh, good one. Yeah. Oh, th- you're right. Mm. May, we're all passionate about that, aren't we? Well, because I know what's best for my kids, and therefore I assume I know what's best for your kids. But the reality is, I don't, because I don't live in your house, and you don't live in mine. So we did it one way. The right way, of course, but I can't shellac you or yell at you for doing it differently. I don't know stuff. I would say this. It is increasingly difficult for a Christian to send their child to public school. I do not believe that our kids are supposed to be missionaries to straighten out the mess that is public education or to correct the sinful behavior that they observe in other students. I, I don't think that's their job at that age. Uh, so I, I I just, I don't use that as an excuse to say, sure, it's a bit of a lion's den. It's the devil's lair, but I'm going to send them in as Christian missionaries. I, I don't, I don't, I don't think that that's, well, that's not what I would do with my kid. Maybe you disagree. And what Bible verse are we violating that would cause us to not be in unity. I got to ask, where is it? Where is it? I, I love homeschooling. There, I said it. You like private school. Oh, you know what I say to that? Good on you. <laughs> good on. You say, no, we send our kids to public school. I say, you must have good reasons for doing that, brother. You're right, Jimmy. Education increasingly, though, is getting tense because the CRT is in the schools. The sex ed is in the schools. Oh, here's, oh, hold on a second. I got one for you. California Department of Education <laughs> is being sued because the uh, curriculum was having the students pray to the Aztec gods of human sacrifice. <laughs> ah! Here's what it says. The lawsuit details the State Board of Education approved ethnic studies model curriculum, which includes a section of affirmation chants and energizers. Good thing they didn't say prayers. Although labeled as an affirmation, it addresses the deities both by name and their traditional titles, recognizes them as sources of power and knowledge, invokes their assistant, and gives thanks to them. Here's what it says. Students first clap and chant to the god Tezcalip... Tezcatlipoca. Tezcatlipoca. That sounds right. Tezcatlipoca. <laughs> That's, this, is, this is what a news guy has to do before reading the story. <laughs> That's exactly Especially right. these days in tennis. Man, the Eastern Europeans are just dominating the sport. And sometimes they're in, you got to practice them. I guess I should have. Students first clap and chant to the god Tezcatlipoca, whom the Aztecs traditionally worshipped with human sacrifice and cannibalism, asking him for the power to be warriors for social justice. Next, the students chant to the gods Quetzalcoatl, Hutzilopochtli, and Zippy Totec, X-I-P-E, Zippy, uh, Hippy. Totec, seeking healing epistemologies and a revolutionary spirit. Hootslipaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklaklakla
in pursuit of ultimate critical consciousness. All right. Um, wouldn't that be enough to say a parent shouldn't send their kid to school? And I, I think the answer is maybe, maybe not. It's going to depend on the kid. And it's going to depend on the school because not all the schools are doing this. This is Cal this is California. And every school can be assessed differently. We did that for a number of years. And we very we'd interview the teacher before the year began. And this is this is before we ended up homeschooling because, well, when we moved to Georgia, um, well, let's just say private education is a lot more expensive than it was in Minnesota. Oh, tell me about it. It's it is wowza. It's, I'm, I'm sure it's about $15,000 a year if you want your kid to go to a private school. There may be some that are less. We couldn't find one. And so we homeschooled. But when the kids, when we were sending them right down the street to the public school, we wanted to know what garbage might be slung at our kids because that would help us make the decision. And we determined there was none, so we thought we were not sinning by doing it and sending them there. That could be your, I can't, I can't hate you because I homeschool and you don't. It's not a thing. It's a thing. And we're making a thing a thing when it's not a thing. Jimmy, here's my number eight ah, that I forgot. Yep, here it is. <laughs> If you recall, I had COVID masks, vaccines, abolitionists versus incrementalist, election results, voter integrity, systematic racism, attitude toward politician. I singularize that because I'm just thinking of one specifically right now, and that is the Don. Consider the breadth of the feelings about the former president. And right away, out of the tens and tens of people, somebody just said, no. He's the current president. Okay. Um, look at the disparity right there. So right out of the gate, you've got you've got that issue. You see it like this. Somebody sees it like I. I we 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 can't come together and sing. I know that my redeemer lives. What comfort this sweet sentence gives. He lives. He lives. Who once was dead. He lives. My ever living head. Now with you. You think that he should be the president and you think he shouldn't be the president. No, that's not a thing. Consider all of the other issues. There are people who are just absolutely evangelicals who they're, they're never Trumpers. And then way on the other side, you've got some people who just absolutely adore and affirm pretty much everything. And you've got everything in between there. I get that. He's a, he's a polarizing figure. But we can't be polarized. We can't go for it. And we shouldn't just be holding our noses and tolerating one another. If you're thinking, incidentally, that that I'm soft on any of these positions, I doubt it. I don't think I am. But I don't think that I can divide from my brothers and sisters and not genuinely love them. And I feel that propensity in my own heart. And I see it manifesting itself inside of the Christian church. The body of Christ is becoming dissected. Oh, you're this. I'm that. Isn't there a book in the Bible that actually addresses that sort of thinking? First Corinthians? And how's about First John? As long as we're talking about the subject of love, prepare to take a drubbing on the subject. We aren't just supposed to put up with one another. We should love one another. I... I let me ask you a question. Have you stopped being friends with some people because of one of these issues? Do you maybe go, I don't know that I want to have them over for dinner because of that. If that's going on, my plea is for you to hear the words of John, the disciple of love. It isn't just one verse in 1 John that talks about love. You know, beloved, let us love one another for love is of God and everyone who loves is born of God. He who loves not, loves not God for God is love. That's there, but it's not the only time that it is used. 1 John 3.10. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, for he does not love his brothers. For this message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who is at the, of, the, of the wicked one and murdered his brother, why? Because his works were evil and his brother's righteous. Do not marvel if the world hates you. We know that it does. 
We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. Psh, psh, psh. He's repeating this for a reason. He who does not love his brother abides in death. That should, that's motivation enough for me to go, I want to make sure I've got my, my essentials, my secondaries, my tertiaries in order here. I want to understand what a thing is because I, I don't want this. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. By this we know love because he laid down his life. So we have the definition of love, sacrificial. My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And then he concludes it in this commandment that we should believe on the name of the Jesus Christ and love one another as he gave us commandment. 13 verses, love, 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 not just hold your nose. When it's an essential, we divide. When it's not a thing, we don't make it a thing. This is Wretched Radio. Good evening, my fellow totally depraved Americans. <laughs>